I'm Diane Chubach, the Education Coordinator at the Cedar Falls Historical Society. Thanks for joining us today for Painted Patchwork, a presentation about barn quilts in Black Hawk County. The 2021 featured exhibit at the Cedar Falls Historical Society is all about quilts and quilting. We wanted to include the related and perhaps unexpected topic of barn quilts in our virtual program series. There are many beautiful barn quilts in this area and we will be focusing on two of them today. The format of this program will be like a panel discussion with me asking questions and our barn quilt owners Tricia Welter and Harriet McMahill answering them. At the end of this video we will list some links to YouTube videos about making barn quilts. We will also put those links and other links to interesting barn quilt information on our Facebook feed. Barn quilts are an old phenomenon in agricultural history. A woman named Donna Sue Groves from Adams County, Ohio revived that tradition though in the early 2000s. She wanted to honor her mother by hanging a painted quilt block on her tobacco barn. Donna Sue soon realized that the project had broad appeal and might also be a way to bring tourism and economic development to her county. She worked with the community to create a quilt trail for Adams County and has since inspired many other communities to do the same. There are currently over 7,000 barn quilts that are part of organized trails across 48 U.S. states and Canada. Here in our part of Iowa, you can tour Blackhawk County in search of barn quilts. You can pick up a guide booklet at the Cedar Falls Historical Society at 308 West 3rd Street. Let's go! Let's start with you introducing yourselves. Hi, my name is Tricia Johnson Welter. And my name is Harriet McMahill. And now tell us where we can find your barn quilts. Our quilt is mounted on the corn crib at 4012 Hudson Road, Cedar Falls. It can be seen while driving north on Hudson Road and is located between Green Hill Road and University Avenue. You can see our barn quilt at 13725 X Avenue, Cedar Falls. This is between Cedar Falls and Dyke. What initially drew you to barn quilts? What made you want to have one? Our farm is located in Grundy County. Grundy County was the first county in the state of Iowa to start a barn quilt project. I am a quilter, so putting a big quilt on the side of the barn was a lot of fun. College View Farm has been home to me for most of my life. I grew up here, as did my dad. I've enjoyed quilting for many years, so a barn quilt mounted on a building built by my grandfather seemed like a great idea. What made you pick your particular block? Did you have a special reason for that? I found a pattern at a Kelowna quilt shop many years ago that I really liked. It was appropriate for a farm. The red, gold, and white colors are favorites and are from my Danish heritage. The pattern, modified churn dash, is so called because the triangle and rectangle perimeter of the inner block resembles a butter churn and the center square resembles the stick or dash of the butter churn. I chose the quilt pattern Prairie Queen because I live on farmland that was originally prairie. Tell us about the process of your projects. The quilt pattern is painted directly onto the barn. I picked the side of the barn that was closest to the road so that it could be easily viewed. 
that side of the barn also is the one that's closest to the ground so it was easier to to paint it to mark it on the on the side of the barn and to paint it because it's not very far off the ground. I did some research on the construction and painting of the quilt and also visited some of the Grundy County barn quilts. Ours is built with two finished grade three quarter inch plywood pieces, four by eight feet each. There is a two by four frame around each piece on the back for stability. I applied two coats of undercoat and two coats of each of the finish colors. I was fortunate to have a building to use for painting and put these boards onto sawhorses. Here are a couple of photos of the painting process. To hang the quilt, two by four boards were attached to the corn crib, and then the quilt sort of hung on those pieces and then was fastened to the building with screws. Any tips or suggestions for the people watching today? They may take inspiration from your ideas. It took a very long time during the summer of 2011. The paint had to dry between each coat, and of course it was very humid that summer, as it always is. Applying the masking tape around each pattern section was very tedious, but then quilters are used to tedious work. Also, the quilt was very heavy, and I was very impressed with the good work the carpenters did to hang it. Choosing the colors was a lot of fun. Picking colors like lime green and purple to put on a big red barn uh, was a lot of fun to put together as a project. I really like the way the purple looks on the barn and with all my purple petunias that I have in my flower beds and garden during the summer, I think they work real good and look good with that side of the barn. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Quilt blocks have many different names. Many of them are tied to the agriculture heritage of our area. Here's another look at Trisha's beautiful barn quilt. And Harriet's too. We really appreciate Trisha and Harriet's time preparing for this video. Thank you both for sharing your barn quilts and their stories with us today. Don't forget to stop by the Cedar Falls Historical Society or the Cedar Falls Tourism and Visitors Bureau to pick up a Barn Quilts of Blackhawk County booklet and then plan a relaxing drive around the countryside to see Trisha and Harriet's barns along with a number of other beauties. And check out these videos about making barn quilts by going to these videos on YouTube. You have just a couple more months to see our quilt exhibit at the Cedar Falls Historical Society Victorian House Museum. It ends on December 17th, 2021, and we would love for you to stop by and see it.
Thanks for watching today.